In this video, we'll be taking a look at three MLB games happening on July 26, 2024, and providing you with free team picks and total picks for each one of those games. So six picks in total. Welcome back to Cash Out Sports. Let's dive right into it. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe and to click the bell icon to get notified as soon as these videos get released so that you have more time to plan out your bets as we provide these videos on a daily basis. I can guarantee that you'll have all the important information that you'll need on these three MLB games after fully watching this video. One more thing before we start, if you would like to gain access to our best exclusive sports picks to take your journey to the next level, then check out our Patreon in the link down below where we offer our best single picks, parlay picks, and much more. Now let's get started. Chicago Cubs vs. Kansas City Royals In the first game of a three-game interleague series, the Chicago Cubs will face the Kansas City Royals at Kauffman Stadium on Friday night. Both teams enjoyed a day off on Thursday, ensuring they will be well-rested for the matchup. When examining the season as a whole, the Kansas City Royals have outperformed the Chicago Cubs. The Cubs may even be considering selling off key players before the trade deadline. Offensively, the two teams are on different levels. The Cubs are tied with the Tampa Bay Rays for 22nd in Major League Baseball with a .685 team OPS, while the Royals rank 12th with a .717 team OPS heading into this game. Starting pitcher Kyle Hendricks has had a tough season for the Cubs, posting a 2-8 record with a 7.52 earned run average and a 1.57 WHIP in 13 starts, making it likely that he will struggle compared to Brady Singer. Brady Singer has been pitching exceptionally well lately, while the Cubs have had difficulty hitting against right-handed pitchers. Since the All-Star break, the Cubs have managed just a 42 WRC plus and a .485 OPS against right-handers. In contrast, the Royals have recorded a 139 WRC plus and in .867 OPS over the same period, suggesting that Kyle Hendricks will face a tough challenge in containing Kansas City's offense. One area of concern is the Royals' bullpen. Over the past five days, Kansas City's relievers have posted a 4.11 earned run average and a 5.04 Fahrenheit IP across 15.1 innings of work. Meanwhile, the Cubs' bullpen has been stellar, throwing 22.1 innings with an impressive 0.81 earned run average and a 1.85 Fahrenheit IP in the same span. I have not been impressed with Kyle Hendricks in his role as a starter for much of the year, and I am not confident in his performance on the road against a Royals team that excels at home. Considering the circumstances, the Kansas City Royals appear to be in a stronger position coming into this game. Therefore, the Kansas City Royals' money line is our full game side pick. When evaluating the pitcher's performances in July, both have been effective in limiting runs. Kyle Hendricks has a 1-2 record with a 3.21 earned run average and a .245 batting average against in 14.0 innings, while Brady Singer is 2-2 with a 2.49 earned run average and a 1.38 WHIP in 21.2 innings this month. Throughout July, both teams have excelled in pitching, with the Cubs leading MLB with a 2.49 team earned run average in 19 games, and the Royals ranking 8th with a 3.74 team earned run average in 17 games. Given the Cubs' recent offensive struggles and Brady Singer's strong form, we shouldn't expect many runs in this game. If Kyle Hendricks begins to falter, the Cubs are likely to turn to their bullpen early as they urgently need to secure some victories. On Thursday morning, Chicago was five games behind the final wild card spot in the National League, while the Royals held the final wild card position in the American League. The under has been a consistent trend in recent Cubs games, hitting in each of their last six contests. Only two of their last 12 games have seen more than nine runs scored. Similarly, seven of the Royals' last nine games have gone under the total. Consequently, under the projected total is our full game total pick. Miami Marlins vs. Milwaukee Brewers The Miami Marlins are heading to American Family Field in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where they will face off against the Milwaukee Brewers. This season, the Marlins have a disappointing record of 37-66 and are currently in fifth place in the National League East. In contrast, the Milwaukee Brewers hold the top spot in the National League Central with an impressive record of 59-43. During the 2023 season, the Brewers have a 4-3 record against the Marlins. While the Marlins had some success playing in Miami, they have struggled significantly on the road. Offensively, Miami ranks as the worst team in the National League. On the pitching side, 
Peralta has been effective, consistently limiting opponents to fewer than five hits and has already held the Marlins to just one run this season. The Brewers boast the third lowest bullpen earned run average in the league, and they have not allowed more than three runs in their recent games against the Cubs. Given these statistics, it seems likely that the Marlins will also struggle to score more than three runs against the Brewers. This bodes well for Milwaukee's chances of securing an easy victory. The Brewers have a higher batting average, on base percentage, and slugging percentage at home, which contributes contributes to their ability to score over five runs per game. In their previous encounter in Miami, they managed to score four runs off Rodgers during their 7-5 victory in May. This season, the Milwaukee Brewers are batting .286 against left-handed pitchers at home. Trevor Rodgers, the Marlins pitcher, allowed four runs on six hits, issued four walks, and recorded four strikeouts in just 3.2 innings against the Brewers earlier this year. The Miami Marlins have struggled as underdogs on the road, with a 1-4 record against the run line in their last five away games. Despite relying on their offense to offset their poor pitching, the Marlins have been unable to score enough runs to make up for their deficiencies on the mound. In this matchup, I expect a similar scenario where the Brewers will capitalize on Trevor Rogers' poor performance and the Marlins will struggle to keep up with Milwaukee's scoring. The Miami Marlins continue to be one of the worst teams in baseball, and their road performance does not inspire confidence. Trevor Rogers has not been able to replicate his rookie season success, and this year has been no different. Freddy Peralta, on the other hand, has been solid this season. These are games that the Brewers cannot afford to lose as they aim to extend their lead in the division. Given Given these factors, the Milwaukee Brewers to win and cover the spread as favorites is our full game side pick. Additionally, expect the Brewers to have another strong performance against Rodgers. This Milwaukee team averages 5.07 runs per game at home. Having already scored four runs off Rodgers in Miami, that number could increase in this matchup. With the game's total set at 7.5 runs, it seems too low considering the recent performances of both offenses. The Milwaukee Brewers have an over-under record of 19-11-4 as favorites at home this season. Meanwhile, the Miami Marlins have an over-under record of 4-1 in their last five games and are also 4-1 in their last five road games. It is likely that the Brewers will almost single-handedly cover the total, and it is improbable that they will completely shut out the Marlins. Therefore, over the projected total is our full game total pick. Colorado Rockies vs. San Francisco Giants The Colorado Rockies, with a record of 38-65, currently find themselves languishing at the bottom of the National League West standings. Despite their overall struggles this season, the team has demonstrated some resilience since the All-Star break, posting an impressive 4-2 record. Their latest victory was a resounding 20-7 triumph over the Boston Red Sox. Jacob Stallings was a standout performer in this game, driving in four runs, while the team collectively launched four home runs. On the mound, Cal Quantrill delivered a strong performance, pitching for six innings to secure the win. Meanwhile, the San Francisco Giants hold a 49-55 record, placing them just above the Rockies in the National League West standings at fourth place. In their recent series against the Los Angeles Dodgers, led by the phenomenal Shohei Otani, the Giants dropped three out of four games. Matt Chapman, despite being tied for the team lead in home runs with 14, has epitomized the team's offensive woes, batting just .233. The Giants lineup features players like Matt Chapman, Michael Conforto, and Lamonte Wade Jr., who possess significant power and on-base ability. Facing the Rockies' pitching staff, which has had its share of struggles this season, the Giants' hitters are well-positioned to exploit these weaknesses. The Rockies' bullpen, often seen as a weak link, could also be vulnerable to late-game rallies by the Giants. Coors Field is known for being a hitter's paradise, which amplifies the impact of a team with a solid offensive strategy. San Francisco is at a crucial point in their season, needing to secure wins to stay competitive in the playoff race and for some players to stay in town. While the Rockies have a high-scoring offense, the Giants' pitching staff, including key relievers, can provide critical innings and control the game. If the Giants' starting pitcher can deliver a solid performance and the bullpen holds up, they can mitigate the Rockies' offensive threats. The Giants' depth in pitching provides them with various options to neutralize key Rockies' hitters. The Colorado Rockies come into this series with some positive momentum, but they have been particularly poor on the road this season. The Rockies hold a dismal 14-36 record on the road, 
road, while the Giants are a solid 28-22 at home. The Rockies have the worst pitching staff in Major League Baseball, but Kyle Freeland has been one of their few bright spots over the last few weeks. San Francisco plays their best baseball at home and they are going with Harrison, who has only allowed one earned run in his last two starts. This should be a fairly solid pitching matchup, but given the Rockies' unreliable performance on the road, the San Francisco Giants' money line is our full-game side pick. Coors Field, known for its hitter-friendly conditions, significantly amplifies offensive statistics. The high altitude and dry air in Denver contribute to increased home run rates and higher scoring games. With the Rockies recently exploding for 20 runs against the Red Sox, the trend of high-scoring affairs at Coors Field is clearly in play. Both teams have shown a propensity for high-scoring games this season. The Rockies have an over-under record of 53-49-1, indicating a near 52% hit rate on the over, while the Giants are slightly better at 55 to 47 to 2, translating to a 54% hit rate. The Giants, for some reason, have a commendable over-under record of 22 to 13 to 1 against the National League West this season. The Rockies' recent offensive explosion is a promising indicator. After putting up 20 runs, their lineup is clearly in a groove. Pair that with the Giants' own ability to score runs, and it's easy to see how the game could surpass seven and a half total runs. Therefore, over the projected total is our full game total pick. That's all for now, so if you have any other games you would like reviewed, then leave a comment down below with the game you would like analyzed. Subscribe to our channel, leave a like on this video, and we'll get to it as soon as we possibly can. We would also love to hear your opinion on the picks presented to you in this video, whether you agree or disagree with them, so leave a comment down below and do let us know.